Hey, good day, folks. Hello, good morning. Hey, Hakan. Happy New Year. How are you? Yeah, Happy New Year. I'm doing well. It's uh, been super busy uh, even before the New Year and now, now coming back uh, into it. But uh, yeah, busy is good. <laughs> How about for you? Yeah, uh, same with me as well. So um, yeah, I will be changing my organization by the end of this month. But I will be in the area of uh, self-sovereign identities and uh, will probably continue with this working group as well. Oh, great. Do uh, when, when do we get to hear the details? That sounds exciting. Uh, the beginning of February, I would say. Once once I switch, I think I would be able to officially announce it. Since the, um, there's a recording, I don't want to yeah, yeah, fair. disclose yeah. it at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, thanks for the heads up. And uh, yeah, I hope, hope we can continue. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. But by the way, just one more information. Uh, the next two weeks, I will be on vacations, rest vacation. So I will not be attending these calls for the next okay. two weeks. Yeah, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, of course. All right, let's see here. Um, share and... Yeah, how's that look? Let's see, that should be our meeting. And didcom is highlighted because, I don't know. Well, there we go. Okay, uh, let's see, does that look all right? It should be our meeting page. Yep. Great. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to the uh, January 16th, 2023 meeting of the Aries DITCOM V2 working group. Um, our mission is essentially to uh, accelerate uh, the adoption of DITCOM V2 uh, within Aries and beyond and um, I just have to remind everybody about the Hyperledger uh, Code of Conduct uh, and um, um, I'm forgetting the term, the, the Hyperledger uh, Antitrust uh, Policy. So please feel free to, oh, let me post the link in our comments here. Chat. Please feel free to uh, add yourself to the attendees list uh, on that document. Um, and is there anyone new here who would like to introduce themselves to the group? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Simon. I'm here with uh, Philip. Um, we're both from uh, Hyphen, a Danish startup that are building a commerce focused um, SSI wallet. And we're super interested in, uh, in, in Bitcom and what it can enable for the uh, user and brand company interactions in the future. So we're just listening in and learning more. Great, Simon. Yeah, glad to have you. Um, so uh, the, the wallet is a web wallet or a mobile wallet or? It will be a mobile wallet uh, to begin with, uh, but there's probably going to be like multiple agents. Yeah, good. Very good. And uh, yeah, I think I saw that you guys had uh, signed up recently with Aries. So so you're fairly new to the whole Aries ecosystem? Uh, yeah, we have uh, really been diving down the uh, SSI rabbit hole the past uh, six months, I would say. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, we, we come basically from from the web three blockchain space and then uh, like our eyes were opened up to the whole SSI thing um, just been diving into that and uh, learning a lot about the different uh, let's say communities um, that are within the SSI space uh, and trying to figure out which holes to bet on is it areas is it more the Revamo uh, you know way of doing things and um, yeah but it uh, I think we have been convinced by the Hyperledger and the Ares community, especially now with the adoption of the V3C uh, verifiable credentials and, and kind of moving. Uh, it seems like these different spaces are converging uh, and Ares really has a lot of uh, fuel behind it. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a great community uh, that's been around for quite a while and uh, yeah, in a lot of ways has defined a lot of uh, what SSI is, I think. 
um, and it's helping that that open standards are um, becoming more well known and yeah we can kind of all hang on to the yeah to the same standards so I think that's that's helping the convergence uh, a ton but uh, yeah this is uh, a pretty exceptional community in in the sense of uh, just how um, well they work together and uh, you know it's a it's a good group so glad to have you uh, glad that you found uh, found us did you want to say anything about uh, you know real quick just uh, the blockchain world that you're coming from or you don't have um, to but... no i mean the, we've just been looking into the uh, space between uh, let's say consumers and brands and how that relationship is evolving and you know last year we saw a lot of stuff in the web3 space with nfts and and identity on the blockchain but um it seems like there's a really nice overlap between the whole ssi idea and some of the technologies that we do have in, in web3 that can enable some super interesting and new ways of interaction um and that's that's kind of uh yeah what we're looking at great awesome thank you okay uh let's see any other um anyone else want to say hi or introduce themselves yeah i'm uh, i'm also here from hyphen and my name is philip i work together with simon uh, as a developer but uh, i will mostly listen in today uh, but i'm i'm happy to be here yeah great great to have you philip thank you thanks thanks all right cool um all right, so uh, let's see. We have uh, our welcome section. Ah, oh, let me edit. Okay, good. Um, Aries agent test harness. Uh, let's. We're just going through the updates um, from from the different groups that um, we might have some information about. We had talked some about Aries agent test harness uh, last week. Uh, Thomas was here uh, from from uh, Apache Camel, and he had done. Uh, if I can. He had done this report, yeah, uh, for just um, support for DIDCOM uh, across the different AIPs. Sorry for all the scrolling. I'm trying to find, I think, yeah. So he, he was just um, trying to update himself on Aries Agent Test Harness, which is uh, the test harness in Aries for agents to connect to and find out how, uh, get a score for how interoperable they are. And part of this uh, group is, uh, we think part of our work will be to kind of improve the amount of testing um, and, and simplify as well some of the testing within uh, Aries Agent Test Harness for DIDCOM V2, specifically specifically because DIDCOM v2 isn't part of an AIP yet. So we've been talking a bunch about AIP 3.0, which would be a DIDCOM v2 focused um, AIP. But uh, the previous two AIPs, one and two, uh, Thomas was going through and just looking at uh, support for those and the types of tests. So we've essentially been talking about Aries Agent Test Harness a little bit more here in um, 2023, and uh, that'll be a focus of, of some of the work that Roots ID that, uh, that I work for. Um, that, that'll be some of our focus as well. So uh, I don't think that they had their monthly yet. So I don't know if we have any um, meeting updates, but anybody else want to say anything about Aries Agent Test Harness or ask any questions? Okay. And then uh, Aries Ascar uh, secure storage. I did see uh, an update that um, I think uh, uh, Ariel uh, from the AFJ uh, group, I think he just did a, a pull request for some Aries Ascar uh, support in uh, AFJ. So that's good. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to mention anything on that, feel free to jump in. Uh, and then our frameworks. Uh, so Hakan, I don't, I don't know if your group has anything for um, Akapai updates. Uh, yes, I think you were in the call as well, but I will give a recap from the last Akapak meeting uh, regarding how we will be proceeding for the Aries Cloud Agent Python and DITCOM v2 implementation. Uh, basically, we had a question mark related to the encryption envelope, which one we wanted to use. There is an Ascar implementation. However, it is not fully developed yet. 
it is still missing some uh, components, some, some features for it to be a fully viable uh, encryption envelope for Aries Cloud Agent Python. But currently what we can use is uh, different um, yeah, libraries for the DITCOM v2 encryption uh, envelope. And there were, there were a couple of options like uh, Rust implementation. There is one that has been created by Sigpa. And uh, after talking to the Akapag community, we have decided for the time being to roll with the uh, Sigpa implementation of uh, DITCOM v2 encryption envelope because it has a full feature set and it can also resolve peer dits natively. It does come with a couple of uh, let's say disadvantages uh, in comparison to a native ASCAR implementation, for example, the key management, so that the keys are actually leaving ASCAR itself. Um, however, as long as we are not really considering using a hardware secure module for uh, connections, basically the uh, ED20 or X25519 keys, uh, this is not a large problem. And at this point, uh, it is also not planned to do so, like at least not on the next uh, viable, like short to midterm. And that's why, like as a path of least resistance, uh, we will be using the Sigma libraries uh, for DITCOM v2 encryption envelope. Great. Then, and, okay, yeah. Go, go ahead. Yep. No, uh, if, if there are any questions or remarks related to the encryption envelope, we can, I think, talk about it right now. Yeah, sure. So, no, one question, Hagan. So, you're going to use the Sigma library for DigitCom and yeah. the Sigma library for DigitPeer. It's both the libraries, or DigitPeer, are you going to be handling that in a, with your own version or a different library? I, I thought the. Uh, encryption envelope library is supporting did peer resolving on a native level i did not know that there okay. are two different libraries for it but i i might be wrong on this one well you, you mean you mean the the sigma library the didcom sigma yeah didcom python it's like i'm gonna link, post yeah, the link yeah didcom python right yeah yeah because i i implement uh, uh, a mediator using DITCOM Python from Sigma. And Great. Yeah, you're right. But, but the DTP uh, library in Python is a different library. So I think you can use whatever you want for DTP. But the examples and demo are using the same, right? Okay. That's, that's very good to know. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't very clear to me. Yeah. So in that case, I think we will also be using the DTPR uh, libraries from Sigpa because currently the way it is implemented in Akapai is, uh, yeah, it's there is a special treatment for peer dits or you don't even really exchange peer dits on Akapai at this point. You just exchange a key, uh, a recipient key and an endpoint. And from the recipient key, a peer dit is generated on the, uh, uh, site that is actually receiving the message, the uh, out of band message at this point. So um, we we will be using these libraries uh, from Sigma to resolve the peer okay. that's good. Yeah, that's really great. Um, I did uh, just for for others to tie it kind of together. Um, if we go to oh, which I should have had. Uh, let me just pull up uh, the HackMD for AIP. Uh, yeah, so the this is kind of why uh, the AIP3 is important uh, because this, it, instead of just saying, well, why don't, um, uh, you know, why, why don't all agents just use DIDCOM v2? Uh, there's a lot of nuance to that, which uh, kind of Hakan is uh, exposing, you know, with, with uh, deciding which libraries to use and, and how each agent supports uh, uh, specific DID methods, specifically DID peer um, is, is, being uh, put forward as kind of this base uh, did method that that we need to support, um, and didcom v two doesn't necessarily 
you know, uh, uh, levy that on an agent, right? You can use any did method. So um, that's why having this interop profile uh, is, is important in order to help people to kind of know this, the, the, the kind of uh, most basic path towards being able to interop, uh, including with DITCOM, DITCOM V2. So uh, that's really good info. Uh, that's a good update. And and the SIGPA libraries, uh, they keep showing up everywhere essentially because um, they've, they're have they kind of the most used at this point, uh, especially with the, within the Aries community. But uh, Veramo, I think also uh, has leveraged a bunch of the SIGPA stuff. Uh, and if anybody else knows other other usages, but yeah. So, so I think it sounds like a good decision. Yeah, I had a quick question. What's the timeline for the Asker implementation? I was curious to see like another DIDCOM implementation that's not from SIGPA. Uh, or like, is that, uh, do you think that's gonna happen since we're gonna like use SIGPA? Uh, I don't think we will have an Asker implementation for encryption envelope in the next three to six, well, at least three months. Let's, let's put mm -hmm. it that way. So there is a pull request that has been uh, created by Andrew Whitehead on the uh, Akapai repository. I will find it and send the link. And uh, yeah, somebody would have to continue on that work uh, to have a full featured, uh, yeah, DITCOM v2 support and the encryption envelope side. Got it. Yeah, I guess like what I was curious about, like it wasn't just the encryption envelope because Didcom V2 also has like a couple of like core protocols. And right now, uh, as as you guys were speaking, like it came to me that we only think of Didcom V2 as an encryption envelope, but I think we should also think about having like a core set of protocols uh, that I think like stand, like the Didcom library should come with, like the routing protocols. Sometimes it becomes an issue, like how do you display the keys? Is it like a URI, is it like a DID, uh, that kind of things. Uh, but yeah, excited. It's close. Yeah, that sounds. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it will need to be uh, implemented. I think at this point, still. So, if there are no more discussions for the encryption envelope, we do have a bit of update coming from the protocols as well. Not the protocols that. Um, yeah, Alex, you were mentioning, but rather the protocols related to credential exchange and um, connection establishment. And uh, Judith is working right now on the out of band V2 implementation on Ares Cloud Agent Python, so that we will be able to have um, we will be able to have a flag for DITCOM v2 for the connection. So the areas can differentiate between whether a connection is based on DITCOM v1 or v2, and from that point on to use uh, the protocols accordingly, including the uh, issue credential v3 and present proof v3. Yeah, very good. Just um, for, for those who might be newer for, for DITCOM, DITCOM v1 and, and DITCOM v2 are, are significantly en enough uh, different that um it's uh it's yeah it's a, there's there's a there's a wide enough gap between them that a uh, didcom v1 uh, agent can't really uh, do can't can't communicate with a didcom v2 uh, agent and so um you know, Akapai has support for Did Didcom v1s, uh, and so Hakan and Judith uh, are, have done a, a ton of work to try to um, adapt what already exists in Akapai uh, so that it can do both, distinguish between Didcom v1 and, and v2, and then uh, act appropriately. So that's great. Um, Anything else on that? Sorry, Hakan, if I was... Uh... No, no, you wrapped okay. up really well and I do not have any other updates from the Occupy side. Great, yeah, so, those are... Hakan, one question to Hakan is, uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned the connection like protocol. Are you gonna be developing a connection protocol or maybe adapting the key exchange or the DID exchange protocols on that or just yeah. not using any protocol at all? So 
we will adapt the did exchange. I don't know if it will be the on the time of Judith's uh, master thesis, uh, depending on how far she can come. But uh, it is planned to have did exchange uh, for this going to be two, like in terms of message structure. However, right now the main focus is really out of band protocol, so that uh, yeah, both well, one party can actually broadcast a unencrypted message that can be fetched by a uh, somebody who wants to connect to and then start the uh, protocol exchange, basically. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. And also, maybe one more topic, like you're you guys were talking about the test harness. Uh, I think also it's going to be very important. And uh, one part may, that we will be uh, making a lot of thought about, and also probably uh, a bit of development work, is the uh, area, uh, extending the Aries test uh, agent test harness. Yeah, very good. OK. Great. And if anybody wants to join that uh, work, you're more than welcome. Otherwise, we would come up with something and then discuss with you guys. Yeah, good. Um, I, yeah, I, we we plan. I, I keep saying this. Uh, you know, I'm probably three weeks behind where where I wanted to be, but uh, we you know, we plan to do um, some work related to Aries Agent Test Harness to essentially make that. Uh, make the didcom v2 related tests and really AIP3 uh, related tests um, just kind of a richer set there uh, so that that someone can specify uh, because currently uh, with the Aries agent test harness let me see if I can yeah so so this would be Aries agent test harness uh, a particular feature it's tagged um, with uh, well, it has tags so that you can essentially run um, these feature sets based on what it is that you're trying to show interop for. And uh, so you can see there are some tests that are, are tagged with DIDCOM v2. Uh, and then, of course, this one's also wacky related uh, and issue credential uh, v3 related. Uh, and so um, we would want to also have on this something like AIP 3.0. And then we had also talked uh, about, uh, let's see, last week, we talked about having maybe a simpler uh, tag than even AIP 3.0 because AIP 3.0 kind of is basically saying that you can do credential exchange since Aries uh, mission seems to be mostly bent towards um, you know, the presentation and exchange of credentials. Uh, and so can we have essentially a tag that's something like, yeah, didcom v2, but even uh, something like didcom v2. Um, or messaging or something maybe. Yeah, or messaging or, or yeah, some way of basically saying uh, I can do AIP 3.0, but without credentials, because maybe I don't care about uh, being able to exchange credentials. I just want to be able to be able to do safe, secure communications with a DID, and mm. I'm willing to use DID peer and, and things like that. So that seemed... Um, that, that seemed to be a nice concession uh, that we told the Aries um, working group on Wednesday. They meet on Wednesdays. Um, and that's always helpful because Sam's in there. And uh, we basically told him that idea. And when, you know, when we say, oh, well, Aries is mostly focused on, uh, you know, verifiable credentials, you know, Sam says, well, you know, we, we, we make this what, what we want to make it. And, you know, Aries kind of has expanded over time to be more of like open source SSI related things. But anyways, I think, I think that's kind of a good uh, concession to basically have AIP 3.0 include um, verifiable credentials and then um, still be able to do some kind of, uh, you know, base did come interop for Aries. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sounds good. Good. Uh, okay, so then Aries Framework JavaScript, I'm just going to look real quick and see if I can pull up the pull request um, that Arial had. Yeah, here we go. Let me bring that up. 
Yeah, so uh, let's see. Uh, initial implementation of Aries Asgar module for AFJ, uh, including interfaces for st storage and wallet. Um, so that's only kind of tangentially related to this stuff because we're talking about Asgar, but um, I thought that was worth being aware of. Um, I'll just throw that under here. And ah, but the bigger news, <laughs> which I've, I should have uh, start, let off with this. Uh, the pull request for Didcom v2 support um, is basically getting delayed. So SIGPA uh, was uh, attending the uh, AFJ meeting last week, and they basically said, we don't have any more cycles to continue to work on this pull request. Um, essentially, the uh, SIGPA had submitted the their pull request for Didcom v2 in AFJ while AFJ was in this big transition between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Uh, 0 0.3 being much more modular version. That's uh, there's this movement of independence, right? So moving away from having uh, Aries agents um, focused on indie ledger and being more ledger agnostic, and then also just being modular in general to to um, yeah for plugins and things like that. And so um, that pull request has been going through this long um, process. You can see November 10th and yeah, somewhere else on here is a date, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, the point is it's ongoing uh, and it's not complete. And SICPA is basically saying they're, they've run out of uh, cycles to work on it. So any thoughts on that? Um, Anybody, yeah, uh, it's it's hard to imagine. I, most of the most of the people who would pick up that work are are the AFJ, you know, related people like uh, Animo or um, Ariel has done a, a ton of work, I think, with Datum V two. Um, so I would imagine he's interested in it. Roots ID certainly is interested in seeing that work uh, move forward, but at the same time, we aren't um, using AFJ right now. Um, so, yeah, the, the thing I think with the, this PR is that anyone new to, to the library and to that need to decide if we want to start digging into this PR that is, you say, like, like 30, 148 files, or you start a new one. <laughs> hey. And that, that <laughs> I think is the decision. Yeah, probably it's, it's, if you are new, yeah, not, yeah. You don't know all the details on that because also you this PR is way ahead of, of the of the main branch. So you, you not only need to understand what is in there, but you need to adapt to the to the latest code. So probably it's, mm, I think it's gonna be better to to start from scratch probably. But I don't know, that's it. that's a, a feeling. Mm. Yeah. Any other any other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we certainly we want to see if AFJ uh, did come v two, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, we were hoping that this work was would be completed. I think Animo and 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 Sigpa have gone back and forth on it, and and I, I truly believe everyone's you know making the best effort to to kind of make it happen, but. It's really hard when a framework is experiencing a massive shift, and then this did come v two pull request is just so big that then kind of going through and refactoring it so that it's it's ready for for uh, AFJ zero dot three. I mean, yeah, maybe Roto's right that maybe just use the pull request as a as a guide of uh, or for lessons learned uh and then maybe do something new but it's a little bit sad to see because uh yeah it's like if you can just get through then well we've got it now in afj so uh, but it's not there so okay and then i don't see oh yeah i do see bruce um 
we, we had talked about uh, the Pico's um, work. Is there anything, Bruce, that you want to give us an update? Uh, yes, um, our students have just returned from their uh, end of year break, and we'll have the first meeting in the new year uh, tomorrow. Actually, Good. Uh, early, and they are using the SIGPA libraries for envelope encryption. That's what they're working on right now. Great. I, I saw that it's a new working group from IoT devices that may be related to, to the PICOF. I don't know if you're aware, aware Bruce, on that. I think it's going to be, it's a new working group that I think they're trying to, to raise I, people to, to show that. Yes, thank, thanks, Rolo. That's the one sponsored by DIFF. Yeah, or then, yeah, I think it is, right? Yes, I've, I've been a member of that working group for a, for a few years. It used to be a sovereign foundation group. And we really Let me find if, if there's another one, I would like to know about it. Yes. I saw the message last, last week. So let, let me, I'm going to try to find it and write that. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure if you're deep or not. Yes, uh, Picos are, are work very well with IoT, and uh, the, yeah. the idea of having IoT devices either be agents or be closely associated with agents is 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 very powerful. So. Um... Yeah, maybe while Rhoda's looking that up, uh, I think the bifold group, the Aries bifold group has, um, I can't remember if they've already had their summit, but um, if anybody knows kind of what their plans are with uh, kind of a more modular uh, component breakdown of, of their work. I haven't been keeping up on it, but I've heard about it and they uh j just for anybody who doesn't know they use afj as their uh as their uh, agent framework and and so yeah uh, we were hoping again that if uh, didcom v2 was supported in afj then you know aries bifold would have it and now you have um an identity wallet that's didcom v2 and you know we could do all kinds of nice collaborations All right. There's also one more uh, framework that I uh, saw by the end of last year. It is the uh, native framework for iOS Swift. Does anyone know anybody who was working there? But I think it's coming from South Korea, if I remember correctly. Right. So I can find it. Yes. Yes. I I attended the uh, presentation um, from I think he calls himself Conan, or, or I could be wrong about that, but uh, you know he says his name's difficult in English and even in Korean, uh, so he calls himself Conan. And uh, I do see updates, um, but I don't think I, I asked him about Didcom v2 support, and I I think he said that that was not on his radar. Uh, he's essentially developing uh, that framework solo uh, himself. And so he's it's taking quite a while for him to just get kind of through the AIP 1.0, I think, uh, or and maybe 2.0 uh, work. But yeah, I, I recall him saying that Didcom v2 wasn't on his, uh, his short list. I see. But I'll, I'll throw this one here just we could keep up with it in case uh, I did see a pull request from him recently, but uh, I don't think it was for Didcom v2. All right, good. Um, okay, so um, yeah, Aries Agent Test Harness we kind of already talked about, um, but uh, just to remind everybody that, yeah, we had kind of come up with this idea for a, a new tag in Aries Agent Test Harness. It would essentially be two new ones. There would be the AIP 3.0 uh, tag uh, as we, we define that, uh, and then something simpler uh, that's not, not credential focused. Um, 
And yeah, maybe we call it something like just did com v2 peer. And, and in which case, you know, that's telling people, yeah, you need to support the, the, the peer did method. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that that is a, a great idea. It seems like the, the Aries Working Group folks think it's a great idea. Um, and I, you know, I'd like to to continue to report back more on this uh, as I get into it. But like I said, I thought I was going to be starting about three weeks ago, oh, and I haven't started yet. So hopefully this week. Any anything else we want to say about Aries Agent Test Harness or ideas about the um, or about uh, you know how these features are are put together and tagged. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, AIP 3.0. Uh, I'd like to see this move forward uh, faster, if I'm honest. I'd, I'd like to actually see AIPs iterated on more often within Aries. It seems like they're, you know, it's maybe like a, a year long process, but I don't, I don't see you know, a reason for it to be, right? If uh, if an agent supports one and two and then three comes out and let's say they don't even, you know, uh, want to implement three or or just, you know, have don't have time or, you know, whatever it is. And even an AIP four could come out. And, and to me, that seems okay. Uh, that's the reason we have versions. So anyways, I'd like to push this process forward. Um, more so any thoughts on uh you know accelerating iip 3.0 or things that that we think we need there uh, one, have... one common lance is that uh i think last last week when daniel present this uh, grand unify theory, theory oh, of, yes um, you have uh, trust i think they call it that way and um, they mention to use um, did it carry as a kind of replacement of did it peer? I think as as a as a goal to have that. I think some current grab that and I say okay, this is a good timing to put that on AIP three, right? Um, okay, and that that was last week. Yeah, I'm not sure that. Adding that on AIP3 is a, is a good timing right now because this is nothing ready and it's more complex and needs to be developed. So this is something that probably I, I wouldn't put in AIP 3.0, maybe 3.1 or as a or optional, something like that, but not as a main component of AIP3 because that's will delay that. Yeah, I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Um, that kind of that I think that is what triggered my intuition that yeah, these things need to be much more fluid. Uh, you know, it's it's I I get it that because Aries has been used in production, that that changes are not uh, you know. Not so simple, uh, and, and you know, and we've seen with the work that Hakan and Judith are doing with with uh, Akapai, for instance. You know, you have to do some adaptation. You can't just uh, uh, throw Didcom v2 implementation in there and and you know forget about uh, the legacy. But at the same time, this this gut alliance, the Grand Unified Theory. Maybe I should put uh, that. The, this grand unified theory is is something that uh, I don't think anybody should be afraid of. Uh, you know, we should applaud that that Daniel Hardman is trying to get um, these communities, uh, you know, the carry community, the Aries community, the diff community, the trust over IP community to continue to converge. Uh, and so I see AIP 3.0 really as a, a stepping stone because uh, we've asked Daniel Hardman directly, you know, there's been mentions of Didcom v3 and and again some people uh, get nervous about that right like oh you know everyone hasn't accepted didcom v2 yet uh and so we can't start talking about didcom v3 and i just don't uh, agree with that as a technologist uh oh yeah thanks um for providing the link 
uh, yeah, I won't go through all this, but um, I'll, I'll uh, I guess, yeah, Roto posted the link. I'll put it in the notes here so that anyone can look at the, but the point is, uh, I think, yeah, the, there's no reason to be scared about looking to the future and figuring out how we're all going to converge. Uh, and so I, I, I see our working group here as, you know, trying to accelerate Didcom V2 and then also AIP 3.0. And then, you know, we want to accelerate accelerate the grand unified theory, I think, right? That, you know, the more that these communities come together on open standards and find ways to iterate faster so that they can converge, uh, that seems like a good thing to me. So. Um, I, I essentially would think that uh, something like this would be like AIP four. Really, it's different enough to me that if you're going to instead of using um, peer dids, you know, using carry dids, which the carry did method is literally under construction right now, it's trying to be accelerated so that maybe it is uh, mentioned in AIP three point oh. But you know, we've seen how you know it takes time for libraries and all these kinds of things. So. Um, yeah, carry and and some form of didcom that is uh, kind of beyond. Uh, originally, Daniel had said that didcom v3 is just didcom v2. Uh, you know, maybe with some small changes, but but accepted by, by the I, IETF. And as part of that um, acceptance, they need to have a test harness, uh, for instance. Uh, and so, you know, the work that we're going to do with Aries Agent Test Harness for, for DIDCOM v2 uh, essentially makes it so that DIDCOM v3 can, can be that, uh, could, could, you know, uh, more quickly reach um, IATF standard status. So thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, good. Yeah. Sorry. So yep, just just throw, wrote it on the chat. Like uh, when I hear Didcom v3, I start to get a bit anxious because of the <laughs> um, change that happened from v1 to v2. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of contact with the um, yeah with Sam Curran or uh, the others that are like uh, working on the Didcom v3. But maybe you have some uh, insider info about it. Like, is it what what would be the change like are they also planning to change the message structure or is it just uh, uh standardization through ietf and maybe yeah changing a bit from the encryption envelope side of things i think that they're going to change the elliptic key exchange protocols so, so right okay. now they come who uses ecdh 1pu and i think they don't want to do that anymore so like they're going to remove auth encrypt um, that's kind of like they were saying that it's kind of redundant to add authentication uh, on the IDs. So uh, yeah, that's kind of like one of the major changes as far as like, uh, yeah, it says in the presentation, kind of like remove auth encrypt if you look down somewhere. Uh, but yeah, that's all I recall. Okay. Yeah, but, but I, I think there is nothing uh, already said or agreed on this come three dot dot out. So I think it's- Oh yeah, it doesn't even exist. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, it doesn't even exist. There wasn't a meeting talking about that. I think there's yeah. just brainstorming ideas that uh, th those those topics will be covered on the did it come working group on the first Monday of each month. So there's not, not nothing decided yet. So I think they're just ideas. I'm probably they're gonna go that way, but it's just ideas. Yeah, and if you're you're more of a visual person, although I I still haven't um you know truly digested this this diagram. Uh, this is a little more uh, detailed, but this is what uh you know they're hoping to converge towards, which is this trust spanning layer, uh this trust spanning protocol that kind of allows um, for flexibility at uh, in these layers, similar to how like a network, uh, the network stack uh, protocols converge at, at IP. They're saying that uh, they'd like to be able to use Didcom and carry and the Aries ecosystem, uh, you know, RFCs and things like that to to converge on a trust spanning layer that that allows um, for this 
grand unified uh, adoption uh, of SSI. And so that's going to be hard and uh, but but you know could be incredibly valuable. And yeah, Hakan, what you're saying about um, you know a Didcom V3, uh, you know, making you nervous. I mean, I do understand that from uh, an implementer's point of view, um, but I do think that it's just it, it's the stepping stone, right? Like uh, you know, going from Didcom V1 to to V2 is useful, and I think that going from Didcom V2 to whatever Didcom V3 ends up being. It will be a useful step, uh, but not without uh, quite a bit of work. Yeah, great. So, uh, but it's certainly not something that we should get hung up on, you know, in terms of because it doesn't even exist, right? It's just an idea, and so we we can also uh, shape that idea. So I, I think it's important for us to to acknowledge it and 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 help shape it, just like we're doing with AIP three point yeah, so, uh, when was the working group uh, meetings again? Uh, let's see, Trust Over IP is doing uh, their trust spanning uh, meeting. They just added it, but um, I can't remember if it's one meeting of like the, they have maybe a weekly meeting and then one of those meetings per month is uh, is focused on trust spanning or I'm not sure yet. I haven't attended a specific trust spanning okay. uh, meeting. But that, even that won't, um, I don't think that they're going to necessarily develop DIDCOM v3 in that meeting. Trust yeah. over IP kind of, you know, they exist more at like the, the higher like uh, architecture level. So I haven't heard of a meeting that DIDCOM v3 would be discussed at. Yeah, but I think if, if you want to talk about DIDCOM v3, that's should be the DIDCOM working group meeting that is held every first month of the, of, of the month, every first Monday of the month. Uh, and it's at, oh, let me see the date, it's at 2 p.m. Easter, Easter time? No, 3 p.m. Easter time, right? Yeah, okay, it's, so it's, it's late it's, for Europe. At least it's 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. Central for me. So at least. <laughs> 2 p.m. Central. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll send I'll send the link. Yeah, the, it would be great. Thank you. Chat. Thank you both. Good stuff. So uh, kind of, uh, let's see, we have 10 minutes. Um, the biggest focus for us is getting, uh, I think, AIP 3.0. Uh, and 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 you know related tests to that um, pushed forward. Um, hey, Lance, quick question: yeah. What would it look like to have AIP three point completed? Yeah, uh, like, that's like, a great question. Because, uh, like, in my opinion, like, right, like having Wacky packs and then the default protocol that the Dubcom V two spec implements. That's kind of like it for from an Aries perspective. Because, so, like, it's related to issuing credentials and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And then did come to is the encryption envelope, and it defines some protocols so like it makes sense to implement those to make it work, right? Because otherwise, if you don't have a mediator, like you're not gonna issue credential, like exchange credentials, like most most likely. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I did wasn't involved in the the AIP 1.0 and 2.0 definitions. So, um, but what seems to be happening is this document is changing much less uh, lately. So I feel like that means um, you know we're we're converging. Um, so I think that on the Wednesday meeting we should ask them like what else do we need to do to make this real, um, and, and and then you know do it whatever whatever it takes whatever documentation needs to be done mm -hmm. okay see yeah, that makes sense nice. yeah because i mean in the end aip 3.0 yeah i don't know if they actually hold a vote or you know how that works i mean uh, sam has kind of repeatedly yeah. said that you know as a community we we define these things and you know we mm -hmm. we we just champion them so um hopefully hopefully uh we can just keep it uh at the forefront of their minds so that it can move through because yeah i would like to see this just 
you know, let's let's settle on something. And and if it's not good enough, uh, you know, then you make a three point one and a three point two, and you know, so on and so forth. Let's iterate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What you said, correct. That's kind of like what I was what I was wondering. Is like you want to iterate fast, so like let's get some more feedback from from other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I think like as long as like two agents can exchange credentials, like we did come with two, I think that should be like the minimum requirement. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so look, can we do a, a quick pass on this document, and that way we can come uh, on Wednesday and maybe say, hey, you know, uh, the the Aries uh, Didcom V two working group says we like this. Let's let's move forward. <laughs> How's that sound? Uh, so, so this base requirement, any, any, any objections to this base requirement, essentially, obviously you need to follow the DITCOM V2 spec, uh, and it gives you these, uh, these, the, the, the protocols that are, are defined in there, uh, trust ping out of band, discover feature routing, uh, and, and talks about the envelope routing profiles. Uh, I've stuck this link in here. Um, and then, yeah, this one as well. And then uh, these features, uh, revocation, notification, uh, wacky pecs, uh, wacky pecs present proof, and using peer dids. Any objections or additions that people want to see? So maybe one question that I would like to ask to the round is uh, revocation notification. So revocation is a topic that is, first of all, optional. And uh, second of all, we were talking about like having uh, DITCOM V2 light versions, let's say, or like uh, for messaging and all that stuff. So this would not have been a place for uh, having a basic messaging functionality with DITCOM V2 basically. And my question would be like whether this belongs to the base requirements for AIP 3.0 in that case. So I yeah I think that that is essentially the question that we brought back to them. Uh, that you know several several projects, uh, Didcom v2 related projects, don't care about verifiable credentials. Uh, they just care about DITCOM v2 and having a, a, a DID method that, uh, you know, is well established as as kind of the standard within ARIES. So uh, I think the pushback from that is uh, I essentially went to the ARIES, you know, page, uh, front page to remind myself what their mission is. And it literally spells out that, uh, you know, their mission is, uh, you know, creating agents that that can pass verifiable credentials and 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 so revocation i would assume is uh is an important part of that uh for them and so when if we say hey we support this i don't think that's precluding us from as a group defining our own um kind of base set where maybe we say um you know hey if you want to just be able to do some messaging then uh you know didcom v2 and 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 peer dids is the is the way to go and you know probably use the sigpa libraries right so what what are people's thoughts on that i i, I feel like if we establish that within the aries agent test harness um so so aip3 you know on, on that list that'll have more on it than what we're saying we really care about. But if we start um, marking features with with you know some tag that says maybe DITCOM v2 peer, um, maybe that's our our you know simpler form that you're mentioning, Hakan. Thoughts? I guess I guess what I'm saying is that we're conceding. Uh, Verifiable credential related uh, uh, things as as base basic for uh, Aries interop, but then I feel like we can have something else that that maybe isn't an official AIP three, but you know uh, that the community could know. Oh, you know, uh, if I don't want to do verifiable credentials, you know, there's at least you know these these tests within the Aries agent test harness that I can I can test to see how interoperable I am without implementing the mm -hmm. verifiable credential portions. I see. So, 
one question I have. So diff already has the wacky did come interrupt profile, yes. right? Right. And that's exactly like credential related. Yes. Uh, yeah. So oh. how is this kind uh, of sorry. slightly different? It's, it's just the, if, you, if you go to issue credential 3.0 on, on percent proof 3.0 is wacky did it come. It's just a link to that. Oh, here we're talking about the yeah, yeah. Uh, here. Yeah, what he did come is here. The, the, not not this one. Go back. Right, right, right. Like the underlying protocols are all the same. Uh, yeah, all the same. Yeah. Should, should be the same. Permanently. Should, yeah, should be the same. Maybe broken, broken, but should be the same. If you go to the last link, Lance, this one. That Wacky did come is your link, right? Yeah, this one. And then the latest draft, yeah. Yeah, let's see here. There we go. Uh, okay, so what what were we saying about this? Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, I was asking like, how can we like, how is this AIP three different from Wacky did come? Because like they're both credential focused, I guess. And that's kind of like what those were the words that I kind of triggered this in my mind. Yeah. yeah think, so in yeah, what he did, yeah, what he did come. Oh, it's kind of yeah. You're right. It's kind of the same. <laughs> <laughs> does it? But does it spell out that you should be using yeah. peer dids? Yeah, and this is deep and, and AIP three is a is this. <laughs> so yeah, that that would be my understanding as well. Uh, this specification is from diff. And it does not talk much. I mean, I saw a couple of RFCs, but it does not talk about ARIS RFCs in general. Whereas, uh, for my understanding, the AIP 3.0 is really ARIS specific and uh, referring to the RFCs that should be a part of it or that should be modified so that they are did be too compatible. But yeah. I, I agree with you. Like, uh, it's there, I, I don't see much difference between them in terms of what they're supposed to do. Well, I think this, this they implement the ARIS RFCs like underlying this, right? They, there is a lot of overlap, and and yes, the ARIS RFCs. I mean, the people who built this stuff are are yeah. It's a right. it, if you look, yeah, if you look at the, the same people, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, basically it's like the ARIS present proof. Yeah, yeah, like in the in the in the abstract, it says that. I use like the present proof from Aries and the presentation exchange from uh, diff. Uh, yeah. So like the credential manifest, the credential fulfillment, I think those are not in Aries yet. Uh, and I think that diff is adding that to the Aries uh, ROCs. Yeah. So I, but I feel like what we're saying is a good thing, right? That, um, A, I, I, I mean, the only thing that I can think of that's that's different is that we are specifying kind of what are the base did methods that that you you need to support in order to be AIP three. But I agree that essentially wacky did come is saying all of these things, uh, and then we're adding this right, and maybe we'll add a few other did methods, but peer did for sure. Mm -hmm. Am, am I am yeah, I thinking yeah. of that right? Or yeah, so so it, it is a small addition, but I feel like a very important addition. You know, uh, based on what we saw in JFF, Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, this addition is. Would you agree, Alex? If 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 you had been doing the JFF challenge and you had this list. And let's say maybe you guys, you know, tr decided to do a simpler form of wacky didcom. But if you had this list and everybody agreed ahead of time that peer did would be used, that would have saved you guys some time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like if we would have had like all of this, because yeah, we had to do it like ourselves. Like we had to like meet and like figure out okay what libraries we want to use, then like what uh, protocol messages do we want to send. So, like if there was like already like preset 
uh, like options that we could have picked be, between that would have been like much easier and like would have been like less time consuming. Yeah. Uh, to figure out for sure. Yeah. Okay, I just realized we're out of time. Any any last uh, words? Okay, great meeting. We'll we'll uh, uh, you know we'll we'll pitch it at uh, the the Wednesday meeting and um, yeah, just uh, we'll do we'll meet again in a week. It's uh, great to see everybody and yeah, appreciate you. Thank you, Lance. Bye, thank everyone. you, Lance. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.